What's with the bottle? Shoot other day about from a Zulu, Fumbu, Uzagaze. Ubuyani. Okay, right, start walking. We are long are riding left and right. You are following the signs. Magafiara, since Baro de Bamme. Gorgot Lobel and all Vulalit. Superhero, the man, yes. And Wakanda is what it is because of the minds, because of, of the vibranium. So I'm an elder. Even if I'm not saying anything, when the camera is fit, it's on Tolang so. Kill the elder, kill the elder. Oh, yes. And exact, that's exactly what I did. Ah. I did my best out of what I was given to do. I said, here, I'm representing our South African industry. I'm representing my country. I'm representing the continent. This is The Hustlers Corner. Brothers and sisters, hustlers and squatters all over the world, welcome to Johannesburg, the Hustlers Corner, hosted by DJ Smooth. Straight up to that chop chop sign first. Let's go to that like button on the count of one, two, three. Let's click that like button. Click, 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 click. Thank you very much, guys. And then let's come this side to that subscription button. Let's subscribe. Let's become a part of the, of, uh, of the family, guys. Click. Thank you. And then also do not forget to switch on that notification bell. If you go to the description, you'll see all sorts of different links there that take you to our other YouTube channels. It takes you to my personal YouTube channel, DJ Smoo. It takes you to our other co-host that we host Virtual Mkuku on Mondays with Upenuel. Click on his personal YouTube page. Click on Virtual Mkuku so that that platform also gets to grow because we're building it on its own. You can also um, click and subscribe to the uh, Mofire shop. The Mofire shop sells more Mofire merchandise, and for those that want to buy and sell Mofire, go to our website over there. There is a link in the description. Let me also let you guys know that recently, a few weeks ago, we've just opened up our channel for new memberships, and we've been growing. We've been accumulating at least a minimum of 10 new paying members every week. So um, we just want you to be a part of the family. I mean, a platforms that I feel I get value from, I pay. I pay for the content because we have to keep the lights on. We have to pay for the cameras. We have to pay for the crew. And at some point, we've got a vision to take this to our own studios. We want to build our own studios so that we want to come back here, guys, to continue delivering great content for you. And we can't do it on our own. A lot of you guys do know that YouTube doesn't pay much. And these things are very expensive. People who shoot or people who run their own channels do know how expensive production, uh, production equipment is and just to continuously keep on shooting without getting any money so if you think you qualify for the 10 rand package the 39 rand 99 package or the 99 rand package it's just totally up to you i am subscribed on the 100 rand package for the podcast and chill i pay them 99 rand 99 every month and a couple of other podcasts as well i mean i pay for netflix as well if you can pay for places that you feel give you value to change your life why not if you can afford it but if you can't afford it, you're still a youngster, a student, grab the content, go out there, learn, become better so that you can hustle in your own way. Talking about hustling, there's people who've been hustling way before some of us were born. And they're even on their highest pedestals right now because the hustler that I have is not just a hustler, he's an icon in South African film, acting and theater. This international, uh, I don't want to call it a superstar, international South African icon is actually on the Somtaga, South Africa and Zimbabwe, Coon Carnivals, Eswatini, Ipintombi, I remember Ipintombi, Monte Carlo, United States, New Zealand and South Africa, Watinta Bafazi, Johannesburg and Pretoria, South Africa, Bubbly Blossoms, Pretoria, South Africa. I know those are some of the plays that she has participated in that are big and global over the past couple of years in her career. Television experience in Kabati, Ziakribana, in Kometa Yota. I remember watching it when I was a kid. <laughs> Masake in Case Book, Scoot is Nice. I remember watching on Scoot is Nice. I mean, that there, um, uh, Joe Dr. Joe Mafela's soul rest in peace. And now that I've just mentioned Dr. Ray Pirilena, may your souls rest in peace and thank you for being our legends. The Lebo Matosa story, Mazinho, Zone 14, um, Musholo Hadi, Housekeepers, Komora, Grassroots, film experience. She's acted in multiple films, guys, mentioning some. I have to read this. 
because you guys were mad at me that I didn't introduce Obab John Kani Gahle. But you know what happened? I did introduce Sega Gahle, but unfortunately, on post edit, we lost the first 20 minutes of the Baba John Kani interview. That's why that introduction wasn't done proper. And I have to do justice to our icons. You guys need to know who I'm sitting with here. I don't usually get starstruck. You know, I'm trying to keep my composure and my cool, but I'm actually a bit starstruck. <laughs> the air up there, chicken business. I dreamed of Africa, country of my skull, funny for ease, Ilobola, Black Panther, Blessers, Losing Lerato, Seriously Single. I remember watching that on Netflix, quoting Anati, Black is King, Queen Sono, shout outs to um, uh, Pearl Tusi, also on Netflix, Ooh Mama, Black Panther 2. She does a lot of social responsibility work. She's our mother in the industry. Actors and actresses that have worked with her in the game will tell you of how warm, accommodating, and how humble she is, and also her willingness to want to teach, help, guide. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the most I will speak on this episode. So, I'm not only excited, but I'm a little bit starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, at home. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, DJ Thank you for having me and hello to everyone who's watching and who will be watching. You're such an incredible human being. I would like to celebrate you, man. Say thank you. Thank you so much. On behalf of South Africans out there, you are a mother on screen just through your work and Siabonga was kutaza good natsingenugu, the entertainment industry. But also I think the most important thing and how you've been able to maintain a career in this industry mm. and still remain with your humility ubun tobacco and still um have that one but in that willingness to teach and guide and look after the younger guys. Thank you so much. Black Panther. How did that happen? The first Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm always asked that question, you know. That's why I'm but I'm, uh, but, and I'm always willing to answer that question. Um, I was called by my agent to go to an audition. They gave me the lines which I'm supposed to, to, to read. And the film that I was auditioning for was called motherland so i did my best as we usually do you know when we go to auditions came here to rosebank auditioned and but i was surprised good okay and then about prajuma fella now treasure chabalala why are they auditioning for the same role that i'm auditioning for uh but i was told uh, the, the, the 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 producer said no they don't mind gender for that particular role so i did my best and i finished went home I remember those days I used to do quite a lot of auditions. So when I was told that I've been cast for a Black Panther, I was confused with Black Panther. I don't even know what it is. When did I audition for it? Because now I know that I auditioned for Motherland and many others. Ne? So on this particular day, and I'm getting ready to go that time. So good thing you want my ticket, visas and all of that. And I'm, I'm like a bit shy to say I'm going to do Black Panther because in my mind, I'm thinking about Abu Stokely Kamaikeli, Kelly, Bo Tupac's mom, you know, who were black activists in the United States. I'm thinking, why do they audition here for a black panther? Maybe they want to distort the history of the Bangali But at the same time, Jabuleli Chop, Nogutu Yongye, Shutala, that side, Nitesh, Nzobona Pambil. Only on this particular day when I'm sitting with my colleagues where I was working, one of them, Uti, Hey, Mama, we understand you are going to America next week. What are you going to do? And I may not timidly so. I'm like, oh, no, shoot a Black Panther. Yo, I was shocked and surprised when I saw everybody just getting excited, jumping and screaming. And I'm sitting there wondering, and then why are they shouting, you know? And one of them came and showed me, they Googled. And then they showed me, and I saw these names. I saw Abo Angela Bassett, Tibo, Lupita Nyongo, Shadwick Boseman, and all of those people. I was numb, Subu. Because that's not, I, I, I didn't know where I was going, you know. Because the script is so secretive, they don't give you the whole script. And they didn't want us to talk about it and even to reveal Uguti Yin. So that's how I discovered Uguti. Actually, I've been, um, I've been cast, go, 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 Black Panther. And I was like, yo, thank you, Lord. This is the time, you know, because I discovered much later on that they actually auditioned 
in America and here in the continent. But the director decided to give me the job. And I was like, you know, I don't consider myself as the best actor in America or even here in the continent. I just think that it was God's time, you know. And I really appreciate it so much that I got that opportunity to go and work there. I have done quite a couple of international movies here at home. I have traveled overseas, as you, as you can see my profile. I have performed on stage in America and elsewhere, but I had never shot a movie in the United States. For me, it was a debut and it was a big, big achievement. How was the experience? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. I, I mean, that is the mecca. That is the mecca of filming. In Hollywood is the mecca, guys, whether we like it or not. You know, and once it's not something uh, that I was dreaming about every day. We could, oh, you know, one day I want to see myself for Hollywood. I was just working here doing my best, you know. But when you are an actor or a musician and all that, you always want to see yourself having an impact on the international world or international stages. So when I got on set, I thought to myself, you know what, Konichume, the director has cast you. And for the fact they're horror or castile, it means the director saw something in you. And I'm sure they must have sat down with other producers to say, okay, these are the four people that are short, shortlisted, four or five, which one would you like? And they chose me. And I thought, okay, it doesn't matter who I'm going to work with. I'm not going there from an inferior, you know, point or situation. I'm going there boldly. I'm going to walk tall. I'm going to do what I should do. Even if I have two lines to deliver or I have one line to deliver, I will deliver it. If I don't have anything to say, it's not a line. Anytime, because my, my, my character is mining tribe elder. I'm an elder, mining tribe elder. And Wakanda is what it is because of the mines, because of, of the vibranium. So I'm an elder. Even if I'm not saying anything, when the camera is feta, it's on tolang so. Kili elder, kibu tsuero elder. Oh yes, and exact, that's exactly what I did. Ah. I did my best out of what I was given to do. I said here, I'm representing our South African industry. I'm representing my country. I'm representing the continent. So I am the ambassador of my continent. I'm the ambassador of my country. And I, I, I'm hoping this that what I do here is going to open new opportunities for people that are coming after me. How I wished every day when I was on set, Uguti, is I wish I had money, you know, just to buy tickets for a few people. Mm. Maybe two producers, two directors, two actors, two art directors, you know, all of those people just to come and experience what I was experiencing there, just to come and see how how those people work. It's the highest level, ne? Yes. You can In terms imagine. of work ethic as well. Yes, exactly. Professionalism. Everybody, whether Mutu is sweeping the floor, they will sweep. You know, wholeheartedly sweep. And you can imagine on set, when you have about three to 400 people on set, on one set, and everybody's doing their job. Everybody's there on time and everybody doing their job. I woke up every day, whether I wake up at four for a, a call at five o'clock, I would wake up so ready and so determined to go and work, happily so. And then the movie releases. And then the movie releases. Now, the premiere is in, 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 is in, um, in LA. Premiere equal LA, I uh, was not, at that time, I was not one of the people that were invited by the production. Because when you are invited by the production, they will buy you a ticket. They will, like, they will take care of all your expenses. And then I want to go to the premiere, you know. I consulted one of the executive producers and they said, okay, we will have two tickets for you to at the premiere. But when it comes to a ticket, your contract, you know, it was not budgeted for. So I had to hustle for Oguti. I must arrive there. And I was saved by the NFVF, which provided me with a ticket to get there. I get there 
and I'm like, wow. Uh, and thanks happy to, to Phil Impella who put it on social media and asked South African uh, designers to design me a dress. And oh, there were so many offers, so many offers. I wish I could have taken all of them. So I decided, you know what, as I grow, can I maybe also grow with one of the designers that are high? So I chose a, I chose to work with Antheline. I know at that time he already had a name, but not quite there. He was already known. So Antheline, that blue dress that I was wearing there. Ah, oh, you look stunning. <laughs> you look stunning. I was actually it, looking at the picture now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it was it was designed by him for me, especially for that um, for that event. Yeah, I, I arrived there and uh, I was surprised at how those people work, you know. It's a long way that you walk with all different media houses uh, queuing for you there. I was surprised that as I'm walking there, all of these people already knew who I am. I don't know how, we, how they do it. Maybe they have a, everybody has a picture of all of us people that are going to, to walk there. But when I was walking from one you know, from one person to another. Those people already knew my name, where I come from. And even the very question that you just asked me now, for the time Uto Kastiwa, you didn't know that you are in Black Panther. I mean, they were asking me those questions, which means those people also do their work. You know, they do a lot of research. So I was very, very impressed about how, how they do things. That is so incredible. And mm. now let me talk about the Black Panther too. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Did you know while you guys were filming that one or releasing that one, there was going to be a sequel? And did you also know that you were going to be a part of it? And how, how did it happen? The, uh, um, I don't remember it being announced. Okay, we knew that there was going to be Black Panther 2. And I was not sure whether my character was still going to be there. But, you know, I spoke to... To God. The Almighty. <laughs> I said, God, I I said Baba, you, so you, you know, you have wired me this way to be an artist. I didn't ask you that I want to be an artist. You are the one who wired me this way. And you, you put me at the doorstep. And you are a good God, you know. You have good intentions for all of us. Jeremiah 29, 11. There's no way you can put me at the door and leave me there. More doorstep. I I said, you are my dad. I'm talking to you now. You have to put me inside. You have to, you put me. And that, like, I can negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. yeah. I'm not negotiating. You are my father. I am just humbly telling you that I have to go in. So, yeah. And, uh. When they were getting ready to, to shoot uh, the second one, I was contacted. It was supposed to be shot, uh, I think, in February last year. Unfortunately, that's when we lost uh, Oh Shadwick Boseman. Oh, yeah. May, soul May his soul peace. rest in peace. Uh, so it was postponed to later in the year, which was, I think, June or July last year. So, yeah. So that was the case. We lost him. Yeah. And how's the experience on the second one? Well, because now I was going for the second time, I think I was a little bit more relaxed. Uh, I already knew my co-workers, you know, the atmosphere, even from the first one when I came, it was like, it's people that I've known. It's, you know, I felt like it's people that I have known for a long time. That's how the relationship was. And I think that thing came out even on the film, the way the film was. There was just that spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood where we wanted to, you know, to make the best out of what I would like to think as one of the best scripts that has been that has been written internationally. As we know, Oguti, most of the time, when it comes to African stories, we are always portrayed as these hungry people, disease-filled people, uh, undeveloped countries. More Bonang people in jail with flies on their faces and everything. And when Black Panther came out, you know, it sort of revived our Africanness. And we like, we were like, wow, we are seeing a black hero for the first time. We are seeing women of power. We are seeing a beautiful story of a country that can govern itself. 
a country that is independent, a country that is rich and is able to use its money, you know, for the benefit of the people of the country. So it's something that we're really, really proud of and we wanted it to be successful. And that's how we worked that time. And I dare say even this time too, when I went for the second time. Congratulations, man. Thank you very much. Beautiful experience. And mm -hmm. you know, the other day I was interviewing uh, the great Ubab John Kani. You guys are icons together. Thank here you. Here at home in South Africa. You guys, you know, we hold you on, on, on the same regard. And he was saying to me, the role that you guys played in, that pro in the production of that movie was more than just for what you guys were called for. Apparently, you guys even helped them with our dialect mm. and with our pronunciations yes. and language. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the times, a story can be so beautiful, the script can be beautiful, and the acting can be great, and cinematography, etc. But if the language doesn't quite hit as Konko scene, you might just miss it. And yeah. what he was telling us, good to know, you guys were actually even involved in helping them get our dialect right. That was what was, what was good about the, the director of the film, O. Ryan Kugler. Uh, before the film was shot, he actually came, you know, he came here to Southern Africa, he came to South Africa, he went to Lesotho, he went to Kenya, but for the rest of the continent, he had people that were re doing research for him. But in this part of the continent, he came la himself, Uzile. And what was good about him is that he's that kind of director who will pause, if you have a, a, a suggestion, who will pause and listen to you. And Oprah John says when they were shooting a particular scene, he asked, jo he asked uh, Ryan to say, but you know what, we are in Wakanda and I'm, I'm, I'm the king. I don't think I would be speaking to my people in English or to my child in English because we are in Wakanda and Wakanda is supposed to be somewhere in Africa. So Ryan said, okay, what language uh, would you speak to, to your son or to your people? Oprah John wants to know, I think I will speak Kosa. It's Kosa because it's my mother tongue. And without any trouble or debate or anything, so, oh, okay, okay, let's use this Kosa then. But, you know, I remember when Black Panther 1 came out, there was a lot of criticism to say, hey, Marli, they're not speaking is Kosa. So now I was like, you know what, now I so appreciate that our language was, 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 um, Acknowledged, Reco acknowledged and yes. recognized our culture, those sort of blankets, you know, our musicians, our babes, and others. I mean, Africa is so big, but most of the things that were done were done, you know, the South African way. I, I just appreciated that. And another thing which most of the time audiences don't realize is that we are shooting this story in Wakanda. You know, you know, you can go to, to America right now depending on the state where you are, they have their different dialects of how they speak. You can go to Zululand right now in Adal KZN. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, yeah. Listen, so so, mm. I come from Velkom originally, but I don't speak so to like Mutuali so to or Wako Kwak. So I was saying to them, but guys, this is closer, this is Kulunyala. I say Eastern Cape or Western Cape. Esasa Wakanda, you know, yes, yes. you know, yes, yes. <laughs> Rikoleng, and these people are hearing this closer for the first time. So you can't expect Uguti within a week or two or even three months or even six months that we were shooting there, they can speak perfect. It's closer. Nati nati si 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 bakala singara as kulu minjenga bantu sepedi seke swala lang. As is ako as is. And then so na sepedi seko as is one according to the areas. So one is the way do one is. Yeah one. So nati no. I had to say you to go to. Let's say closer say is as wakanda access as Eastern Cape or Western Cape. But let's appreciate to go to. The, 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 globe, the, the global world is beginning to recognize us and recognize our talents, you know, and I really give credit to Orion and the executive producers of Black Panther to allow us to, to speak our language there. Actually, it's still spoken even now. Santanda, Mayas. Thank you. I Santanda. Futwa na futsi akbonga ngoba. You are active in communicating with us on social media. You are in touch with us. You are on the ground. Yes. With us. And you play your role as a mother amazingly well. Thank you so and much. And I just want to commend you for that. You know. Yeah, boy. What does Women's Month mean to you? Because when I look at you, I think of the stories of um, women marching against the past laws back in the in, mm. in, in de decades ago. 
you know, and that's also one of the parts of, of the stories that inspired him of fire is the, the youth uprisings in 76 and, and, and the women's march marching against the past laws. Mm. And that's a very significant um, political story in our history in South Africa. And for those who don't know out there, you have somebody who's, who, who's lived and you're st we're still blessed to still have you here. But what does every time, every, every year when you hear people saying it's women's month now? Yeah, like you just said now, it like I must reiterate that it goes back to that year in 1956, you know, for women of the country during that period to be so bold as to go to the walk, you know, from all over the country to walk to the union buildings to, to, to demand for their rights. Um, and I'm wondering, Ugutina, today, would we still be able to do that? I mean, there are so many things that are happening now. Um, the struggle of that time, for me, it doesn't seem to be the same as it was that time. Konamanje, it looks like everybody is beginning to look after themselves more than looking at the community per se. And that, that doesn't actually talk to women only. Generally speaking, it, it looks like we are becoming um, we are becoming self-centered, if I should put it that way. Before you can look outside. Um, you've also spoken about 1976. Fortunately, 76 I was there. I remember very well I was a teacher. Kolo Ratong Orlando in Soweto. Uh, there was so much dedication and passion, not just from the students. Because what the students were doing they inherited it from the people who came before them. But there was so much dedication towards fighting for the rights, you know, for the rights of, of the people generally. Uh, a lot of people lost their lives, you know, and I don't know what, what is it that we can do to revive that spirit in 1976 and to revive that spirit in 1956, even if we don't do it exactly the same way, but find other ways of, you know, taking us back and saying, okay, guys, this and this and this we have achieved, but this and this and this we haven't achieved. How do we collectively as youth and us, the people who came before you, how can we tackle such things? You were a young person and you've lived during the most difficult times of this country, apartheid. Yeah. How was it growing up a welcome? You know, as a child... Um, some of the things you see, you know, it's kind of like normal, which is not good. Because I remember my father, my father was a policeman. My father used to wake up a couple of five going to work. Yes. And I know that the money that he was earning was not enough. I remember that there were shops and places that we were not allowed to enter. I remember that even as I grew up, there are careers which as a black person I was not allowed to do or there was no school for it. For an example, there was no school of acting for black people. Like, you know, it, our education was fashioned in a way that you should just work for them. Otherwise, if you're a professional, you are a nurse, you are a doctor, you are a lawyer, you are a social worker, you are a clerk. It was hard, but but we lived, you know. And uh, sure. Get emotional, no? Yeah. My mother was a domestic worker. I remember she was earning maybe 20 rand a month. So it was a struggle to live, you know. But we we managed. We managed to live and we managed to fight as much as we could until where it is today. How did you get into acting? <laughs> <laughs> Your peers were going to university, <laughs> babang, aspiring to become nurses, doctors. You just decided acting. I'm sure your parents were awesome. And then one. <laughs> okay. So in Velcom, where I come from, at my home, there was a stoop outside. I don't know whether the stoop was something but there was a stoop. It's a lady different from some beam. Exactly. <laughs> lady corporate. Yes, there was a stoop outside, 
and in Okuna Apollo, Apollo is a light, you know, the street light. Yeah. In a light, I was too high. So my mom, my, my mom was very musical and familiar. My mom comes from KZN and they knew how to, they knew how to dance. And our neighbors would come and watch us, you know, and they also knew some of the songs and the dances which my mother used to teach, teach us. My sisters could dance. So when I grew up, actually, I, when I grew up, I thought I was going to be a singer because I used to stand on that stoop and sing. You know, and I would tell my parents and the people that are there. At that time, uh, uh, England was the place. I don't know why Nero worship are the places <laughs> that had colonized us. <laughs> <laughs> but England was the place then. And I used to tell them that, you know what, me, one day in Zoho, I mean in England, I will go to England. But I didn't even know what I mean because Velcom was like so far away from things, you know. The only time when we saw acting or something, countless Carlo, Bragip and all that, Boma Hotel Queens and all that. Those are the people Banner Babona once in a while when they come. So when I finished my trick, I came here to Tembisa actually to go and train. Oh, wow. it's nice. oh yes, yes. That's why Rorata Soko. Ah. <laughs> you spoke about you being a teacher in Orlando. Mama Kana she was a student course canon Oh, wow. And actually a friend unfortunately got shot. She died on, on oh, that day, June 16th. Yes. And then now when you move from Welcome, you came to Kasia Katembis. Yes. So we've got a connection. <laughs> yes, we've got a connection. I came to Tembisa and I was there for two years. I was training doing nursing in Tembisa. Well, unfortunately, people always ask me this and I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to tell the truth. During the, the times of apartheid, you know, if you got pregnant, go nursing, they would like... By a closer, they don't even want to see you again. Wow. So I got pregnant with my child, Utumi. Utang to me, he's big, he's a man, he's 48. Show stums in Krutmani. Ralebo, Krutmani for my lady. Kim Waro Nakao fella. Thank you guys for sharing it with us. Yes. So when I wanted to go back, they refused me to come back. Kuto Felele is a training. So I ended up going with my first training, uh, teacher training, to go and do teaching. And the reason I was going kwa kwa is because Vele, during those days, nobody would allow you. Like, people were so much against showbiz. When you go to showbiz, it's like, oh, our phone looks up, you don't want to work. Hey, hey, you are going to be just a loose woman. Ing, 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 ne? So I went to teaching. I got there. There was a principal called Molope. Now, because I had matric together with other students that were there, he actually promoted us to do second year. And I was one of the five people that agreed to do second year. Some people were so afraid and were like, ah, we can't do it. Now I agreed. I said, okay, I'm going to do second year. And fortunately, all five of us passed. Because I thought, okay, if I fail, of course, it's a two-year uh, course. So if I fail, it's okay. I will still do it. So Kapasa. And then I Kapasa, 1976, I went to teach. And we were young teachers. These kids were almost like the same age with us then, you know. And then one day as we were sitting there with other teachers, I was just going through a paper and I saw they were looking for dancers, actors, uh, and musicians. And then I went, I, I did have my 25 cent in my pocket. So I went to Mlamlangunzi, Kevela the train, Jobek, Pritchard Street. I don't even remember the address, but I know it was somewhere in Pritchard Street. I went to audition. I just did my best from what I used to do on the stoop at home. <laughs> <laughs> no professional training? Nothing. Wow. I just went there and I thought, I'm going to do my best. When it comes to singing, I trust myself. When it comes to dancing, I trust myself. Acting, I'm not sure, but this is what I'm going to do. And I got there and then they told us that, I, okay, these are the people that are on a short list. So we are going to get in touch with you, blah, blah, blah. You know the talk, Moseri short list. Na Konichume being naive and not knowing how things work, I just went straight to the producer and I said, excuse me, sir, I'm a teacher, so I can't be coming here all the time not knowing where I stand. Yeah. Can you please tell me now whether you are taking me or not? <laughs> <laughs> and I got cast on the spot. Wow. That's how I left teaching. That was so your first gig? First, first, first. And that gig, that show was going to go to Israel and Greece. We didn't perform here. We started rehearsing in Jobek, and then from there, Kiruna Bali, 
uh, Israel and Greece. And it was so exciting, even though there was a lot of opposition or, hey, man, don't go there. Sola you know, Sola, that's, that yes, was the name of the show. That's Sola yeah, Sola, yeah, yes. Yeah. Don't go there. This profession, you know, when you come back there, what are you going to do? I, I was not hearing them, Subu. Because at that time, more teaching, I was earning 101 rent per month. <laughs> ne? And here's an opportunity where I'm going to earn 100 rand a week. And after, and moreover, near Hamba, near overseas, you know? <laughs> oh, it was an international so for job. Me, yes, yes, it was. Yes. So for me, it was a big thing. Or near Hamba, near Israel, and I said, Chris, and you call 100 rand a week. So that's how my career in entertainment started. Wow, it's so incredible, man, to hear you sh share your story. I always say to young entrepreneurs out there, even for people who are still in corporate, that Guys, it's okay to be in corporate because what you're learning from their professionalism yes. will help you so much in other things that you want to do exactly. in the future. I didn't know I when, to when you got into the arts, you already you were already a professional. Yes. Because you were a nurse, you were a teacher, mm -hmm. you were already you know yes. those professional skills. Mm -hmm. And that helps you um as as you grow. Because I see a lot of our younger guys who are either in music or in this entertainment thing that we're in who never had an opportunity to go either work in corporate or go to varsity. Yes. Shem, a and lot and of learn the, the business ethic. Yes, the, the work ethic and all of that. The mm. etiquette, just how yes. you carry yourself, the professionalism, mm -hmm. all those little things nobody they speaks help. about, but yes. they're important. Yes, they build you. That's what builds you. And that's what I want to talk about. How did that help you in your career as an actor? Because sometimes maybe when you start, you don't even have an agent. You're doing certain things yourself. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, there was a lot of that. There was a lot of that when I when I started. You know, it teaches you to to be patient. I think I think the first thing that we should talk about is the career that you want to do or the career that you are in. Is it something that you are really really passionate about? Is it something that you are really, you know, talented in? Are you gifted in it? Are you, is it, do you feel like it's your calling? Because most of the time now lately, people do things because DJ Sboo is doing it. Um, especially today where our kids, you know, they are so much in a hurry. You know, they see you, they don't know the journey that you have walked. One day when more fire is sold, go USA, they will come to you and say, hey, uh, 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 brass, boo, how can I, you know, they don't know that you've been walking the streets. Or some of them even laughing at you. And when it becomes successful, they don't know your journey. The, the industry that we are in, people think it's very easy, you know, and they think you can just come in and, okay, but then by few who, who will be lucky to just come in and become instant stars. But the thing about it is that if you become an instant star, you don't know the path. You haven't walked the path. So you came from here and you went straight up there. The route, Emohari, in between here, you don't know. So if you slip and you see yourself back there, you don't know how to go back there. So it's very important. I'm not saying people should suffer to achieve what they want. But it's very good to walk each and every step and learn as you go, as you put your foot on another step, there are certain things that you learn there. Some of them, they'll discourage you, you know, but if, 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 if you focus and that's exactly what you want to do, I think God is also on your side. He will, he will make sure that you get other people because nobody is successful by his or her own, you know. If you are serious, you want to do something, you are passionate about it, you will focus on that. Even if you fall, you'll stand up and keep on working. It's not easy to bring up children and also hold a family together working in our industry. And I can only imagine in your days, mm. from back in those days, how was it uh, being a family person and working in this industry? Because it can get unstable. Maybe there's like maybe months and months where you're not working, there's no money coming in. How has that journey been? It's, it's very hard to be a, 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 a person in an industry where where you are a freelancer for the rest of your life. People always ask me, Mam Kony, but how did you do it? This is 45 years now today, as I'm sitting here. Wow, congratulations. Thank bro. you. <laughs> well, you see, I, I, I always say to people, I don't know. And I'm serious when I say I don't know. And you know, because I was like, maybe 
am I crazy? Why am I telling people I don't know? But uh, last week I was watching um, something. Yeah, Viola Davis. And they asked her the same question. And she said, I don't know. So I was like, I, I can you know, so I'm, not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crazy. Here she is. She, she also doesn't know. I think, and just to love things that you do and to be surrounded by people that understand you who who have accepted her. This is the life that she lives. And you have people like family who will assist you maybe with your children and stuff like that. Because even when I was going to Israel, to me I was only three years old. So I left him for nine months. So I depended on the fam fa family members who I had left my child with. So it's the people around you, you know, the support that you have around you. And just focusing on, you know, being better than the last time. Like they say in this industry, Hore, you are as good as your last project. 2022, the state of the TV and film industry, has it improved? Has it changed locally? 2022, I could say yes and no. There are quite a number of things that have changed. Of course, I don't earn the same amount that I earned 10 years ago. Um, the condition, conditions under which we work are a little better. Opportunities are becoming better, especially through social media. You know, people can start doing their own things. Um, we see broadcasters expanding. We, 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 we have more broadcasting houses now. But I think things can still improve. And according to me, I think they can only improve once we have, not just for actors, for the whole entertainment industry, if we can have a strong union or strong unions. For creatives, ne? Yes, for all the creatives. We need that in this country. Having experienced what you've experienced in the industry and the, the question that I had asked you before about um, the on and off of this industry, that some months you'll go on without any jobs or any gigs, what advice would you give to younger actors who are only starting now or who are about to get into the industry financially? How, uh, and I mean, we can never tell you how to spend your money or what to do with your money. Yeah. But if you were to rewind times and everything that you've experienced, especially the uncertaintiness of this industry financially, mm, what advice mm. would you give them? I will, I, you know, I would advise them to, to, look at, at, to look at having more streams of income, number one, because you can't invest if you don't have anything to invest. I would say you were born at a very good time. You are so lucky to be born today where the social media where you can sell your talent elsewhere except for waiting for a production house to call you or a theater to call you you can create i would say you know go to school and get the basics when you have the basics you have an option of either writing when i talk to actors now you have an option of either writing your own script your own scripts you have an option of working behind the scenes you know, just to broaden your, your opportunities, you know, and also creating your own work. You, you don't have to go and, 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 and pitch, go whatever broadcaster. You know, you can, Honalibo TikTok today, Honalibo YouTube and all of that. Don't give up, do those things, you know. Um, and once you have the money, find a way where you can invest it wisely so that your money can work for you. The thing about it is that social media has come with advantages and, and, and disadvantages. And I think, I think one of the disadvantages is that most of the time we use social media to lie, if I should put it that way. Yes, ma'am. I mean, sometimes in a shooter, band drive is a Porsche. I don't have a Porsche. And then you post it as if it's your own car. You know, you shoot in a mansion go Bryanston or Hyde Park or wherever, you post it as if it's your own, your own house. And you are creating expectations. And once those things are not there, now you start being frustrated. Mental health and all of that. I know that the industry itself can cause that. 
through not having work sometimes. But sometimes some of the things that we do, we we sort of call call them upon ourselves because we end up living a life irsa irsa appealing. So now I would suggest that it's nice, you know, to be called a celebrity. Maybe because when I started in showbiz, there was nothing called celebrity. We were just people who loved our craft. But today the celebrity is okay. Enjoy it. You are being celebrated. But celebrate it, celebrate it in a way that will not work against you. Ero uli celebrity, kau sano boto celebrate. So we are celebrity man, but before, ono luko dimu, you didn't know your neighbors, you didn't know anyone. No makshoni we next door, au sawa zukta tu mese, uyo pila e next door. Like so pezulu ga cool. You said to me when I came here that I'm humble and all that. It's my personality. This is this is how I am. I don't know how to be something else. I mean, even if you can meet me go Hollywood, I will still be this one. When I find you eating papa lima lima utwana, I'll wash my hands and I'll join you. This is just my personality. I don't know how to be anything else. I think I think the job that I've uh, I, I'm doing, and the gift that God has given me, He has given me to to entertain His people, to educate them, not for me to think or now that I'm in the limelight and I, I'm on the public eye. I should think that I'm superior or I'm better than anyone. I've got relatives, I've got relatives who have nothing, I have, you know. So when I go to them, should I go there as a celebrity? They are my people. I sit down with them and I eat what they eat. Mm. And then you, you do a lot of social responsibility work on the ground. Let's talk about, um, and I don't like calling it charity, <laughs> you know. Mm. Um, yes, it's good. That's what it's called. But people like yourselves, it's people that have lived this giving. But let's all yeah. fang is more blessed than let's all amohela. Yes, I've I've finally decided to register a a foundation called the Konichume Foundation, because things that I was doing, I was just doing as na, out of my own strength and 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 finance. Like, for an example, I, I will cook for people, but to most mole, you know go and give them food in summertime when it's hot take my bottle stay empty a cold drink you put them in my deep freezer drive my car to go and give to them you know i will go and offer to do an uh, um, workshops wherever i can but you know what uh Sbu, i think i'm 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 at that stage now where i think even if i do that i also have to look at myself you know um, I don't know, I might be too late, but it's not too late because I'm still alive. I've decided I'll do that, but I'll do it in a certain way that I cannot just be running everywhere. I have to identify the areas that I want to to look at so that I just do those and avoid being called everywhere because when am I going to have my own time? When am I going to have time for my own family? When am I going to have time for other things that are personal. So with my foundation, I'm going to just identify certain things that I think I want to do. I'm not going to be running anywhere. I give it to you like a book, I give it to you like a justice, I give it to you like a justice. No. We can share. You know, we can share the responsibility. Mama, I just want to appreciate your humility to come and just sit with us here. I'm going to sit with us it's not some big studios, you know. <laughs> but you're like, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of big things are going to be born. Yes, man. A lot of things are going to grow. I have seen some of the people that you are interviewing. I have seen Penwell here several times. Yes, man. Young people who are bent on, you know, opening our eyes on certain things that we probably don't see to build our country, the economy of our country, for the betterment of our country, not just our country, the continent, and I dare say the universe, you know, la, la ruta. People always ask me, Urma, by the way, I turned 70 this year. Wow, and congratulations. Yes, I did. I did. 
Congratulations. Bam bam Wena maruka re nga thau kuki. Kiru no nya kula ngamba ganga nya tela ganga why? Because I associate with everyone. I associate with chaka chaka. But I also associate with with younger people. I sit with them. I talk to them, and and I don't want them to be afraid, you know, to say things which they say when they are together. Because we end up not understanding you, because we don't talk, we don't communicate. So it keeps me young to be amongst mm. people that are young. And on your I'm so lucky in Gomorrah where I'm working. I'm surrounded by all these youngsters. Sometimes I just keep quiet, not to criticize. But just to listen what they say, what they want, where the world is, what they are doing today and all that. How about rap? How about rap? Let's go on. Shapa 16 years old. Hey, let's go shapa ya. Yeah, so, and I have, I have children who are 48, who are in the 40s, who are in the 30s, who are in the 20s. I have grandchildren who are boomer 21, boomer up to two years. So I balance everywhere in Yangen. Ah, oh, you've been blessed though. Everywhere in Yangen, yes. It's you a do, blessing. You've been blessed to even recognize generations that you've created. Mm. Let me say, you're, you're not only just in the grandchildren space. I think you are in the great-grandchildren space, right? I'm sure you're about to have a great-grandchildren. I could because the girl, my first grandchild, she's, she turned... 10 to 21 today. I mean, this year. Yes, so, yes. Harley 21, it means anything wow, can happen. What a so, if she can have a child now, then it means I'll be a great, I'll be a great grandmother. <laughs> oh, that is such a blessing, Ma. Yeah. I think every human being would love to live to a point where at least they're happy to have seen their children grow, mm. but they're also blessed enough to see their children's mm. children grow. Yes, yes. But no. you are more blessed if you see your children's children's exactly, children grow exactly. or get, get yeah. birth, do you know? Mm -hmm. And um, before I let you go, you, you, you speak highly of um, the grace of God. You speak highly mm. of Muhao Amudimu. Yes. What the great Lord has done for you in your life. And that is very important for anyone to have that um, source of that center, man, that holds yeah. you. Mm, and I'm mm. sure it's also very important in, in bringing up a family. I want to talk about that as you were growing up. A lot of people right now are speaking spirituality. A lot of us grew up in homes that took us to churches. And it's so beautiful to meet people. And maybe I just want to talk a little bit about that. Okay. Uh, the importance of the, um, the grace of God. Yeah, it's very important. As well. Let me speak for myself. It has been very important to live by the grace because everything that you achieve, you know that, okay, it's not through your intelligence. It's not through your power. As well, clever about how. Anything can happen to you. 21, 21 people were shot in Soweto over the weekend. It could happen to anyone. So for the fact that in Zerapela we are safe is because there is a power. I know that we belong to different denominations, different uh, beliefs. But now this is the one that I believe in. To say that the creator, the creator who created me. I go by that, that verse at 29.11 that he didn't create you to come and suffer, you know, or to harm you. Um, but it doesn't mean Hore. You're not going to experience obstacles. You're not going to experience difficult times. Those difficult times are there to build you, to make you stronger and wiser. So I do believe, Uguti, I am where I am because of him. The gift that, that he has given me, I honor it. I respect it. That is why wherever I'm working, I respect everyone, you know, from the cleaner to, to the executive producer. Because I know that I am because of you and him and her and her. So Mudimo Akiba Tubamaka Kimutsepili. Her whole. And sometimes, you know, people will argue, hurray, you know, you Christians say you talk too much about the Bible and what have you in Toyabelung and all that. How I wish we could go back to to the Old Testament before the Italians or the Romans Bafitako Israel and colonizing Israel. How how I wish we could go back to the Old Testament. 
and and see horna more old testament do they even see one caucasian na rekalefela mo it's a big debate it's a very very big debate but if we could just go to 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 to, to the old testament before we can go go new testament just to see where it comes from we end up rejecting our own things because we don't know because when they came ken nete ba tlika yona bible by twist ba rthetsa ba rthetsa remix yeah ra ba ra end up ri na hana ra se ya rona ene ke ya rona i i normally say to people abantu ana ba ethu khona manje they don't even know ukuthi amasi inkomazi e e ba reka ko 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 whatever shop six ba tlungu di bits o re ke ya rona umqombo uthi uthengwa phi today ba ri haneditse o yetsa ke re bebe ba njwa bo mama bethu ma benzo umqombo uthi ba o yetsa ko di barring our children don't know i'm just making a simple example they don't know that o wethu because o rekwa ko di barring njwa no same as as you know this book it's our book talking about books ma before we let you go we always ask our guests to either recommend three books that have changed their lives to the to our audiences out there or three books even if they they might have not necessarily uh, impacted you somehow but you probably think are great books that you would um recommend to a, a an audience of young movers and shakers and hustlers out there like on our platform what books um can you recommend for our people i will first of all recommend uh, secrets the power of attraction to Rhonda say Rhonda Byrne eh? yeah the yes secret. yes okay. yes yes to say whatever you want you attract it to yourself if you attract negativity you will reap negativity kiona e tlotlang that's the first one oh, that's a life changing book yeah yeah when i came yeah, across that does. book as a youth it, it, it literally does. changed my life yeah. well, you know you've just asked me a very difficult question in front of the whole world no it's not a difficult Kile question ma. And it's fine man. ma you you are a book yourself <laughs> ma you don't even have to talk about other books <laughs> Mama when is your book coming? You yes. know what I I, I I I had always thought ukuthi when I reach 70 during that time ya birthday yaka which was in June I will also be releasing a book. Hey I don't know why like I'm pro procrastinating. I really thought I will release it. Let me promise that at least by next year I must I have so many stories to tell. Sure, ma. And even today, I'm like... So many, I, so many stories. I wanna today, it was just some of the last Yeah, in the kitty showing shows. Yes, if I were to go piece by piece and, and, and talk about each and every segment of what we said today, it's a whole volume. Mm, it's mm. a chapter on its own. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. Book Capitalist Niga mm. and, and other books. I mm. mean... Bukaya Ayanda Buroto, what's the name of? Mm, um, mm. I finished it about two months ago. Um, I forgot the title. But you, are, yeah. you, you are a book yourself. Mm. You are a thick book. Yourself. Yeah, and you and my mind cannot remember everything now. It's okay, ma. I, I only remember I still read a script every day. <laughs> and you still memorize it. I still script. have to yeah. remember my script every day. So some of the things I let my mind release them yeah because i can't keep everything in this brain <laughs> how, how has it been though living your whole life um depicting other people because you, you're an actor yes. you're always playing characters i don't think it has been very difficult Boo, because most of the characters that one has portrayed we have kind of seen them you know i have seen mamukiti Eloxini I have ngimbonilu mamufana no mamkiti I have seen Ustela and this one that I'm portraying now I have not seen her but I have heard that there are women who are like this who are kajekas you know and I remember when when Gomora was was released a uh, 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 one actor from Gomora called me and she said ma you know what this character that you are portraying there, there was a lady who used to be like this, like a Komor, what you are portraying now. So I was like, okay, you just have to get into it. I have not had a problem but portraying a character. Ah, what I an incredible story, man. Yeah. Mama, I'm looking forward to having you back again. 
I would like for us to get into other deeper topics. Yes. There's so much to learn from you. Thank you. Uh, we, we will continue to celebrate your Raleboha. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to say, please be patient. Follow your dreams. Seek advice. Continue to walk the walk. You live on maybe tomorrow. You are the ones who are going to be the glue of, of tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Don't be in a hurry, you know, to do things. Take one step at a time. Don't lose hope. We were not promised a bed of roses here on earth. You are going to meet challenges, but challenges are there to be tackled. And there's no challenge that lasts forever. A challenge is something that you should look in the face if it has a face and continue to walk, to walk the walk. I wish you well. Ah, uh, Mama, how would you like to be remembered? I don't know how I like to be reminded, to be remembered, because I don't think I have the same impact on on everyone. I think I have affected people in in different ways. So, in a way that I have affected you, or affected you, if there's a word like that, that's the way you should remember me. Now I'm just doing what I do, and I'm hoping that I'm I'm sticking to the mandate of God. Uh, the reason why he brought me here on earth. I hope I'm doing that. Remember me the way you want to remember me. Thank you for bringing us up, ma. Thank you. Thank you for her khudisa. Thank you to your family for their willingness to share you with us and the whole world. And thank you for being an inspiration. Thank and we you. appreciate the humility. May you continue to be humble. And I also appreciate you just giving yourself two or three hours of your day today to spend with us and cancelling your other busy schedules. Thank you. Thank you so much. I receive. Same to you, Papa. I have seen you. I have seen your hustle. You grew up in front of our eyes. You are a good example to our children. So may God continue to give you wisdom. May he enlarge your space and may he protect you. I'm very humble, Mama, and I'm getting emotional. She's, this is my mother. Guys, I've had so much fun today. For me, this is one of my best interviews in my whole career. Uh, the legendary, iconic Mama Konichu. Man. God bless you. Thank, Thank you, Mama. God bless you, too. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Oh, I'm so <laughs> emotional. <laughs> Thank you, Ma. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Can you for impacting us. Sure. That was too beautiful. Yo. Just, that was so nice, bro. <laughs> Yeah, no, storm. thank you. Okay, no problem. And Tinsale like to Zanaka. Okay. Just in your Clara Connella. Yeah. Hello. Oi, oi, Shop Gujan. Hola. This is the Hustlers Corner.